Hey everybody, welcome back to my modern homestead. If you don't already know, my name is Janet and I'm so glad you're here. If you're new or if you're returning. Today, I wanted to do something a little different. But I have a question for you. What in the world does a battleship have to do with a homestead? Well, we took a little trip and I thought you might find it interesting like I did. So let's go see the clips and we'll figure out what a battleship has to do with a homestead. For many years, we wanted to visit the USS Alabama battleship. When we went to Mississippi a couple weeks ago for my father-in-law's funeral, we made it a point to finally stop and visit. Can you tell what really got me most excited on this visit? I loved seeing the kitchen and dining areas and see how things would have looked as they were being prepared. And in a minute, you're going to see something that just absolutely struck me silly. I, oh, not silly, but I mean, it was just amazing to me. I loved it. Y'all, the battleship, duh, it has a pantry. Just like a homestead. It has a very well-stocked pantry, and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Ta-da! Here it is! Look at it! Is this not amazing? I'm sure this is not all that a ship would have had, but... Oh, my heart sang... Well, they're spam. Pumpkin. Lima beans. Corn. Plums. Applesauce. What is that? I can't read it. Not quite sure. Strawberry sauce. Is that what that says? Something. Pork and beans, spinach, tomatoes, hominy, pineapple juice, peaches, peas, carrots, and lots of coffee, salt, pepper, dry beans, and flour, syrup, honey, and evaporated milk. Turkey. Well, let's recreate a, this when we go home. Okay. Except for the liver casserole. Ugh. Yeah. There's tomatoes and something. I can't read what those are. Lobster. I didn't see no lobster. Dude. 
I got a Nestle's candy bar. Got another kitchen right here, don't you? Mm -hmm. There's kitchen everywhere. Everyone has their own personal kitchen. Let me eat here. <laughs> Best person has our own. Oh, this must be their room. Lisa, come stand in front of me. Okay. Oh. That's good. There's one guy out there. There's people on that third layer, fourth layer way out there. things you don't really think about but I never thought about a battleship having to stock their pantry because you're gonna be on the water you know what happens if you don't get back to a port or or you're just out on the water you've got to you for an extended period of time you've got to feed all the soldiers or Marines or the uh, what do you call sail sailors <laughs> but anyway so I thought that was just fascinating that whole trip that we took to see that battleship that was my favorite part yeah I guess I'm a homestead nerd officially and y'all I love building the pantry that is just it's become a passion of mine not out of fear but just out of being prepared for whatever life may throw at you that's no secret here I've shared that with you many times with us being self-employed we've got to make sure that we have a stock pantry because what if daddy doesn't work for a while? What if he gets hurt? We need to still eat during this time. So it's always important to me to keep that pantry stock. And that's the same way on the ship. They've got to keep that pantry stock. But speaking of that ship, did you happen to see the menu? What they were having? It was creamed turkey, taters. I like how they put taters. Um, yellow cake with icing. So today, y'all, I want to recreate the battleship menu. So the first thing I need to do is to cook my turkey. And for this, you can have leftover turkey, and that's probably what we're going to do. We're probably going to come back tomorrow and cook this actual meal. But today, I need to get the turkey on. So let's get that part ready. Before we actually do the turkey, I wanted to mention another thing about the pantry. It's very important to keep your items rotated. Now, when I grocery shop and I put new items in the pantry to replace what we've already used, I put the new things in the back. And look at these, you guys. These are items in my pantry that were going out of date this month. So I needed to go ahead and use them. And that's perfect for this recipe because when I do the turkey, I cook it in chicken broth. So perfect opportunity to keep those items rotated. Okay, now I'm just using a little breast. That's all we need for this recipe. So we're going to let it cook in this chicken broth until it's done. It'll probably for this size take four or five hours. So let me wash my hands and get this covered. Okay, I went out to the garden and got a few herbs. I've just got a couple leaves of basil, a little sprig of rosemary, and just a little bit of thyme. And then I got some oregano because I figured, why not? Make sure you give everything a good wash. Now I'm probably going to put a little extra broth in here so that I can use the broth as well as the turkey. We can use the broth later for a soup. Let's add the last, last couple things. Just a little salt. The broth is already salty, so no more than a quarter teaspoon. I didn't even use the whole quarter teaspoon. A little bit of minced garlic. About that much. <laughs> I 
have no clue how much that is. It's not even a teaspoon. And a little bit of onion powder. Again, that was probably uh, not even a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. I don't know. Whatever looks good to you is perfect. Well, unless it's not. I was thinking about putting lemongrass in this. I don't know. Turkey and lemongrass? I know it's good on chicken. Surely it's good on turkey, too. Y'all let me know so I'll know next time. Perfect. Okay, now I won't bring you back until tomorrow. I'm not going to bore you with how to take a turkey out of a crock pot. <laughs> Just now I will take the turkey out and I will save the broth for a soup later. I don't know what she said. But anyway, did y'all happen to see the turkeys in there? And uh, I guess it, it almost looked like pork. Maybe it was a young cow, I don't know. Blew my mind, y'all. Who knew that they did that on a battleship? Never. In my wildest dreams would I ever given that any thought but it makes sense y'all and I, it got me to thinking do they surely they don't still do that today do they and it looked like those turkeys would have been alive when they were on the ship where do they keep them I mean this wasn't Noah's Ark I don't know hopefully somebody out there's got some answers that had a daddy or a granddaddy on a battleship and can give us a little insight. I would love to know that kind of thing. I'm just a nerd. I'm sorry. But anyway, back to this. Oh, 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 let me show you my apron. Can y'all see it? I know I won this in Sunday school the other day. We were doing a drawing. Our Sunday school teacher is doing a drawing every Sunday morning and I happen to get it this week. And this is my pen from Cabin Crafts Candy at Sassafras Creek. I think she actually made this. Hold on because this says Sassafras, I almost did it again, Sassafras Creek Originals. And look, the card she puts it on, it looks like a seed packet. I didn't even notice that when I opened it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back. Maybe the video before this one, I can't remember. Y'all, my videos are scheduled so far out, I can't keep up with the order. Anyway, let's talk about what we're doing today. If you happen to see that menu, I hope you paid attention to that clip from the video. If you happen to see that menu, we're going to recreate the creamed turkey. I'd never heard of creamed turkey before, but I decided we're going to make some. And traditionally, it was served over toast. So we're going to do that, but it was also served with hot cross buns and mashed potatoes. Woo, talk about some carbs, y'all. Oh, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> we're just recreating the menu, just having fun with it. Well, we're kind of creating the menu. Not doing hot cross buns. We are doing the cake, not making the hot cross buns, and we will serve it over toast, but it can also be served over mashed potatoes, rice, or noodles. So anywho, oh, sorry, let's look down here. I've been chopping up two stalks of celery, half of an onion, and I've got some potatoes. These are gold potatoes. I peeled some that looked the worst, left the peel on the others. So we're going to put these on the to boil, and then I've got my turkey over here in my crock pot. Ooh, cold water on my toe. So here's a turkey that's been in the refrigerator. We're going to chop it up. And here, guys, I just took the turkey out of the crock pot. Got a weird color on the edges. I don't know about all that. But anyway, we're cutting this netting off. I think they put this on there to help it keep its shape so it doesn't fall apart when you're cooking it. I'm just removing this. I'm slinging this everywhere. Gross. Now all we're going to do is just slice. And we'll just keep going and then I'll chop this up into smaller pieces. Let's give it a little taste. Good me. 
Okay, our recipe says two or three cups of turkey chopped up. To me, that looks about right. I have this leftover turkey. I'm just going to slice it into thinner slices and stick it in the freezer. We can have it for sandwiches later. Okay, let's check out what we have going on here on the stove. Now, their menu did not call for peas and carrots, but I said, my goodness, this meal needs some kind of color in it. So we've got some peas and carrots. I've got my potatoes, getting those up to a boil, and I've got my skillet here heating that we're going to start the gravy for the turkey. So let's let it get good and hot, and we'll be right back. Went ahead and got everything I need. I've got a half a cup of all-purpose flour, one and a half cups of milk. We'll just start with the one cup, and then one cup of chicken broth. So everything's ready. Once the skillet gets hot, we're gonna rock and roll. Okay, let's get... I'm just trusting the recipe, y'all. I wouldn't have done it, but it says six tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna close my eyes and do it. Okay, it's done. This meal, and I'm going to grab the onions and celery. Oh, y'all. Tell me I'm not crazy. Tell me that's way too much butter for this meal. Even for this old southern girl. Okay, this is ready. Alyssa's going to be back behind me mixing up our cake. And we just made it simple. It's just a yellow cake mix. You can certainly make one from scratch if you wish. But I bet on that ship they made it as quick and easy as possible with what they had. And that might have been a homemade cake <laughs> instead of a mix. I don't even know if they had mixes back then. Okay, y'all. After looking at this again, I guess that would be the right amount of butter for this much flour. It's a half a cup of flour. I'm just going to sprinkle it in over the onions and celery. Okay, you can see how it soaks up that butter. Let's get it mixed in really well. Cook it for just a minute or two. That way, if you cook it a minute or two, I'm sure most of you already know this, it cooks out that flour taste. But keep stirring it. You don't want it to burn on you. Okay, let's stir, uh, stir in a cup of chicken broth. going to stir in a cup of milk. potatoes are starting to boil. They will only take about three to five minutes because they're cut up so small. So we'll just keep a check on them once they're fork tender and they'll be ready. Mm, it might take all this milk for all that flour. Just keep stirring. It'll loosen back up. It's already looking pretty. Y'all have seen me do gravy on here before. Unless you're new. And if you are new, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, it's going to take all this milk. Oh, 
don't know what she was talking about with reserve a half a cup of milk. What in the world? We need that much more. Turn this down a little bit. Let's get some more milk. have a little bit of chicken broth left. I'm going to use it first. There we go. Now we're cooking with gravy. There you go guys, that's your gravy. Isn't that pretty? Now let's add in our turkey. Once we add in the turkey and it gets warm, y'all this part is done. Wasn't that easy? So you can see why it must have been popular on a battleship. And if we need to loosen this up more, all we have to do is just add a little bit of milk to it. Now I am going to add some pepper to it. Not a lot, we're not big pepper. I'm not big pepper eaters, my husband is. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, here we go. Little bit of pepper. And I did taste this. It does not need much salt at all. It's about mm, eighth of a teaspoon, maybe, of that. Mix it up, and it's finished. Okay, y'all. Please excuse the noise. We're hopping in this kitchen. I'm a cooking and Alyssa is washing. She just got the cake in the oven. I'm going to salt these potatoes. It's one thing about potatoes. They like salt. They need salt. And then we're going to add just a little bit of milk. And we're going to start creaming the potatoes. I do have a little bit of butter down in the bottom too. Maybe two tablespoons. for the seasonings for taste. Alrighty y'all, Alyssa got us out eight pieces of bread and we're just going, we didn't put anything on them. We're going to pop these in the oven with the cake and let them toast and that's all we need for this. There we go y'all, there is our meal and I can already tell you that that turkey, well cream turkey is what it's called, is delicious. So y'all, I hope you can get a chance to try it. Our cake is still baking in the oven. We'll have that after supper with chocolate icing. So you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Until we meet again, may you be blessed. You know I love it when you're here for a few minutes. Love you guys.